Our second reading is from the Gospel of Matthew and tells the story of the wise men visit to Bethlehem. Listen now to God's word from Matthew chapter 2. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. And they told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. And then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, and frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of the Lord. Epiphany is the day for restless dreamers and troubled seekers. Epiphany is the day for those who are dissatisfied with their lives and the ways that they have lived and what they have done. You know, it's interesting that Epiphany comes so close to New Year's Day in our culture because we like to make resolutions about all those things we're going to change about our lives, how we're going to live now, what we're going to do differently, when we're going to learn to keep our mouths shut. Well, friends, that's what Epiphany is all about. Epiphany is the day for us. For what is epiphany? It means the word itself, manifestation or revealing. It is the day when, when Jesus is revealed to all the world as the Messiah, the Savior, the Son of God. God's truth in Jesus is the only power great enough to change us and to change our wandering ways, to lead us in a new direction. When we read the story in Matthew, we realize that we are not the first to seek a change. We're not the first to want a new path, a new way. The wise men come from the east seeking something they could not find in their own culture, in their own religions. The star announced the birth of one who would be more than a king, more than a king of the Jews, but the savior of the world. We heard the beautiful words of the prophet Isaiah, nation shall come to your light and kings shall, shall Rise to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about. They all gather together. They come to you. They bring gifts of gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. And so the wise men come to worship Jesus. These exotic, mysterious figures from the East have stirred the imagination of Christians for 2,000 years. Who were they? Were they kings? Were they, were they priests? Were they Zoroastrian thinkers, leaders? Who were they? Astrologers? We don't know. And so for the last 2,000 years, Christians have been speculating and thinking and creating works about these wise men. You know, we don't know what their culture was. We don't know what their religion was. We don't know how many there were. And so we've even assigned them names and said there were three and put them on camels. Well, 
T.S. Eliot's poem that many of you may know, The Journey of the Magi, describes the, the Magi as questioning strangers, seekers who cannot find what they want and need so desperately in their own places, their own homes, their own culture. In search of the truth to be found in Jesus, they leave the luxuries of home and embark upon a very hard and a difficult journey. And on that journey, one of the Magi, according to Eliot, laments having left behind the ease and the pleasures of the, the palace life and have given up all that for this hard journey. And when they arrive at their journey's end, they find not what they thought they would find, for where did they go? They went to Jerusalem, and where would you go if you're looking for the birth of a new king? You go to the king's palace, and there they encountered Herod, but there was no baby there. But the wise, the scribes, the priests of the kingdom told them where to go as a fulfillment of ancient prophecy, and the surprise was that the new baby was not born dressed in purple in a king's palace but in humble clothes, in a small house, in an out-of-way town called Bethlehem. And yet they were certain. They were certain that this birth of this child was the one to whom the heavenly star bore witness, the one who would change everything. And so they bow down, they pay homage, and they offer their gifts. Matthew adds a nice little conclusion to the story, and he tells us that they are warned in a dream not to return to Herod, and so they go home by another way. Well, Matthew wants us to understand that he's not just talking about a different rocky road over the mountain, a different path. He's talking about going home a changed person. For in discovering Jesus, they discover that everything they had known for sure everything they had never questioned, everything they had just kind of blindly accepted in their own faith traditions and in their own religion was cast in doubt. And now a new path, a new truth, a new way lay before them. T.S. Eliot in his poem pictures this new path as a kind of birth and death, a kind of journey that makes them no longer at ease when they go home, to their former places with an alien people clutching their gods. And so I want you to hear T.S. Eliot's interpretation of the journey of the Magi. A cold coming we had of it, just the worst time of year for a journey. In such a long journey, the ways deep, the weather sharp, the very dead of winter. And the camels galled, sore-footed, refractory, lying down in the melting snow. Oh, there were times we regretted the summer palaces on slopes and the terraces and the delights of life there. There were times that it was a hard, hard journey. And the camelmen cursing and grumbling and running away and wanting their pleasures. And the night fires going out and the lack of shelters and the cities hostile and the towns unfriendly and the villages dirty, charging high prices. At the end, we preferred to travel at night, sleeping in snatches, with the voices singing in our ears that this was all folly. Then at dawn we came down to a temperate valley, wet below the snow line, smelling of vegetation, with a running stream and a water mill beating the darkness, and three trees on the low sky, <laughs> and an old white horse galloped away in the meadow. We came to a tavern with vine leaves over the lintel, and six hands at an empty door, dicing for pieces of silver, and feet kicking empty wineskins. But there was no information, 
And so we continued arriving not a moment too soon. We found the place it was, you may say, satisfactory. But all this was a long time ago, I remember, and I would do it again, but set down this, set down this. Were we led all that way for birth or death? There was a birth, certainly. We had evidence and no doubt. And I had seen birth and death before and had thought they were different. But this birth was hard and bitter agony for us, like death, our death. And so we returned to our places, these kingdoms. No longer at ease in the old dispensation with an alien people clutching their gods. I should be glad of another death. The Magi thought that they had come to the end of their journey, but they discovered it was only the beginning of a new journey, a new path, a new way to live. Did you know that T.S. Eliot wrote this poem as a way of reflecting on his own experience of faith, of his conversion from being an agnostic to being a devout Christian in the Anglican tradition? You know, we come to Epiphany thinking it is the end of our journey from Advent to Christmas and now Epiphany and whew, take down the tree, throw away the wreaths, get rid of the decorations, eat the last cookies. But friends, it's not the end. Epiphany is the beginning of a new journey for you and for me. It is for us as well a kind of death and a kind of rebirth to follow the wise men home on a different path, a new way. How will we go home this day? How will we relate to the people at the office or at school or in all of our activities? Will we be the same as we always were or will we be different? Will there be within each one of us a kind of death and a kind of rebirth? I remember years ago there was a knock at the door. The door opened to my study and a man walked in and he not only opened the door of the study, he opened the door of his heart. And he said the simple but profound words to me, I want to live a better life. Well, I kind of had to chuckle within myself because he had a reputation, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but he was sincere about it. And his life began to change and his old familiar friends gave him a fit. They would kid him at first and then they got angry with him trying to draw him back into the old crowd and he would resist and sometimes he would fall and stumble. He had struggles with health and with his business but those struggles no longer defeated him. He persisted. And he began to see the light of Christ and the people around him in the church. And he began to experience the light shining in the circumstances of his life. And he began to experience the light of Christ in the bread and the wine of this table and in the scriptures and in the conversations with his new friends. And one day he came to me and he said, I lived in the darkness for so long that I was never able to see the light that was already shining around me everywhere. But now I see it, even in the troubles. And now Christ has given me a new path, a new way home. I want to walk in the light.